I've got some advice for new creative directors. Okay, so it finally happened. You got promoted. After years as a senior designer or design director, you've moved up the ladder to become a creative director. I'm going to tell you some things you need to know, and I'm going to tell you some things you need to do. But first, let's talk about some of the misconceptions people have about being a creative director. Now, many designers think that when you finally make it to CD, you've got it made. You're just going to oversee the other designers and critique their work, telling them what's good or how to improve their work, which fonts to choose, you know, the design stuff. Well, that's true, but there's a lot more to it than that. Now, first, for those of you out there going, oh, great, another fake design guru who's giving me advice, let me level set my credentials just a little bit for this advice I'm about to give. I was a CD for over 10 years, and then after that, I've been an executive creative director in two global branding and design agencies and a VP of design in two global Fortune 100 client-side companies. I've mentored and led creative teams for 25 years, moving people up the steps of the design ladder through every level, from junior designers all the way up to being hired as VPs of design in other companies they've gone to. I've led teams as small as two and as large as 65 across five divisions. And if you have any doubts about my credentials, just go look me up on LinkedIn. And also, please connect with me while you're there. Okay, so let's get back to it. Maybe you wanted to become a CD because you wanted to make more money. Well, that's one thing a lot of designers do. They think that if they get up to be CD, they're going to make a lot more money. And that's true. CDs generally make more money than senior designers or design directors. But there's a reason why you're going to make more money. You have a much broader range of responsibilities. You have to develop and maintain more cross-functional relationships. And you're no longer just a doer. You're a manager. You're now a people manager and a project manager, as well as a design expert who directs the work of other designers, as well as maybe still possibly producing design work on your own. But that depends on the size of your department and how many designers are there. First, you want to get to know every designer who reports to you. You want to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with each designer. Also set up revolving monthly touch bases with them. They'll want to know that you will be available and you want to know and you keep your finger on the pulse of how they're feeling and how they're performing. It's your job to motivate and nurture and retain them and to keep them from going someplace else. Well, the good ones anyway. You want to ask them what's working for them, what's not working for them, and let them know that you're there to support them and that you'll advocate for them so they're able to do their best work. That's really your job as a CD. You want to advocate for your people so they can do their best work. Now, you won't always be able to deliver everything they want and you need to tell them that, but you'll tell them that you will try whenever possible. Now, the second half of getting to know your designers is evaluating them. You want to learn their strengths and their weaknesses, both as designers and as business partners. Who are the superstar designers who you can always count on to hit it out of the park? Who are the designers who need more guidance or more nurturing or more time? And are there any designers who eventually you may actually want to cut? You want to think about that too, because you may actually have to replace people. But it's not just design talent you need to pay attention to. It's also temperament and communication skills and organizational skills and proactiveness. You want to start thinking about who you can groom to be a leader someday. Who are you going to promote? Who's going to take your place when you get promoted again? One of your key roles as a CD is nurturing that next generation of leaders. You got promoted, right? Well, no one wants to stand still for too long. Everyone wants to have a goal to shoot for. It's really motivating. Now, second, you want to get to know your cross-functional partners, too. You want to get to know the other stakeholders. Schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with them, too. Listen to their needs, what's working for them, what's not working for them, in terms of their working with your studio. Now, these partners could be in production, they could be in marketing or finance or account management. You want to start to build close and trusting relationships with them. Things aren't always smooth sailing, as you know from being a designer. There are lots of problems that are going to land on your desk as a CD, and you want to know and trust your cross-functional partners, because you're going to have to work with them 
and through them to solve those problems. Now, next, you want to take some time to think about what's expected of you in your new role. You'll want to set up a formal touch base with your manager, the ECD or the VP of design or the managing director, whoever that is, and ask them about their expectations for the CD role. You don't want to assume you know what their priorities are. You want to make sure that you ask them. CDs are generally expected to have a higher level of maturity, both creatively and in understanding how the business works from all perspectives, not just designs. And that's one of your goals to learn that stuff. That's probably one of the biggest mindset shifts you need to think about when you're becoming a CD. You'll now need to focus on considering a broader range of functions in the business when you make decisions, account management, production, finance, upper management, product development, as well as the needs of your outside or internal clients. And that leads me to getting to know your clients. The clients you may have may be internal in the case of working at a company or a corporation, like the marketing team or the product development or merchandising or sales teams. Or your clients might be external in the case of working for an agency that works with outside client companies. Take your client out to lunch, whether they're internal or external, and get to know them as a person and let them get to know you. Ask them what's been working for them in terms of their interactions with your department. Listen to their feedback and and don't get defensive. It's really easy when you're coming from a designer mindset and just moving into a CD role to get defensive when people criticize your department. You have to be open to listening to that stuff. At an agency, you want to touch base with your internal account partners too, your account managers, and you want to get their take or their opinion of your external clients. Now, you want to take what they say with a grain of salt because you're going to want to form your own relationships with them. I've seen many clients who the account people had a real problem with who ended up being really great partners and allies of the creative director. So I wanted to take a quick break and tell you about a cool group I've started. It's a private Facebook group called Brand Design Masters. And it's a great community of entrepreneurs and creative professionals who are sharing information with each other and networking and getting feedback on each other's work. They're sharing news and resources and trends and tools and tips. And to join this group, you just need to go to facebook.com slash groups slash brand design masters and join. And I hope to see you there. Okay, now think about how you want the workflow to work in the studio. The biggest part of your job is managing the studio and the work in the studio. How are you going to stay abreast of what everyone is working on? What's the process that you're going to use to stay informed? Because now you have to know what everyone is working on, not just your own projects like when you were a designer. Think about how and when you want to interact with your designers and how you want them to present their work to you. You want to schedule design reviews and make sure to do it in time so you can have time to make revisions to the work if necessary before that work has to hit the deadline of being presented to clients or even internal business partners. Scheduling and project management is a big part of being a CD. So this is another area you want to spend some time planning out. How are you going to delegate work across the studio? What's the cadence of design reviews going to be? What's the cadence of meetings? You want to ask your designers for input because you want it to work for them too, but ultimately you're going to be the one making the decision. Now here's some advice on something you might not think about initially. You want to make some connections with recruiters and freelance agencies. Eventually, you're going to need to hire a freelancer or replace a designer who's actually leaving and you don't want to have to be starting from scratch when that happens. There are freelance staffing firms like 24-7 Talent or Aquint or Creative Circle who you want to reach out to and build a relationship with. You also want to get to know a couple independent design recruiters. Now, there's a special note here, and this is kind of a hack for your career. Getting to know recruiters and letting them get to know you will really come in handy when it's time for you to switch jobs because you're going to be top of mind to them and they may come to you with some sweet job opportunities that might cause your eyes to wander a little bit. So introduce yourself also to the HR department because you're going to be working with them in a whole new way too. Okay, now let's set some goals. 30, 60, 90. Whenever anyone gets promoted or takes a new job, it's a good idea to set some goals. Your manager is going to want to see progress and be assured that they made the right decision in promoting you. Also, setting your own goals unprompted shows initiative 
and more on that a little bit later. I like to think of these goals as 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. What are some close end goals, things that you can affect fairly quickly to make your presence felt? so people see you in your new role? And what are some slightly longer time range goals that may take a little more time? Maybe changing a studio process or possibly even hiring new people. You wanna make sure that you're tracking your progress so you can report it back to your manager in your regular touch base meetings. Okay, now a little bit more on initiative. You have to start being, as a CD, Proactive. This is one of the other big mindset shifts that come with moving from being a doer to a leader. When you were a designer, you were fed work, right? People came to you, they gave you projects, and you did them. When you're a CD, though, you should be starting or initiating projects. That's the difference between being a doer and being a leader. You may have an idea for a project or an initiative that might actually improve the business, improve the marketing effectiveness. It might make the website better or the app better. It might improve the product in some way. So now it's your job to come up with ideas, design ideas, business and process innovations, and pitch them to your manager and possibly even upper management to gather support and money, resources, and time to hopefully get them done. Next, congratulations, your role model. You may not feel it yet, but your designers are gonna start looking to you for guidance. They're gonna start to mirror your behavior. You're gonna be setting the mood of the department. Now, if you're cranky and overwhelmed and stressed, they're gonna be cranky, overwhelmed, and stressed. But if you're looking for inspiration and fostering creativity and are solutions-oriented, they'll take your lead in that way too. It's really up to you how you set the culture of the department. You used to have the luxury of bitching and moaning about all the injustices that befell you as a designer in your design department, but now you don't. Now the buck stops with you. You are the problem solver, not a problem amplifier, and you need to start acting like it. You're also a mentor, a teacher, and a motivator. As I said, the design department culture starts with you. Take the team out to lunch if you can. Take them to a design exhibit once every six months or so, even if you have to do it outside of work hours. Or maybe even take them out to drinks at the end of the week. I used to host at an agency I was at before a pizza lunch every month where everyone brought a few slides of something that inspired them. It didn't have to be design, didn't even have to be work related. We just sat, we ate pizza, we looked at slides that inspired us and we shared why we were inspired by them with each other. The team absolutely loved it and news got around so soon other departments started coming too. Team building starts with people just getting to know each other on a human level. And when things get tough, that camaraderie that you build will save you and your studio's bacon, believe me. So it's worth the time doing. And finally, I haven't said this yet, but take a moment to congratulate yourself. Truly feel this accomplishment. It's a big one. You worked really hard to get promoted to creative director, and it's one of the most significant leaps that any creative professional makes in their career, going from doer to leader. There's a lot to learn, but you can do it. You got this far, right? Now, if you need help getting that big promotion to CD or ECD or even VP, that next big step in your career, reach out to me because I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching to get you there. Just go to philipvandusen.com slash one-on-one and schedule a session today. Until next time, bye for now.